Ladies and gentlemen, I can't really wait to introduce to you our keynote speaker, who, uh, who also, with a special emphasis, who is a regular contributor of articles to uh, various management magazines and a regular contributor to the HRM Nepal, that is Nepal's first HR magazine. He's a regular columnist in there. And uh, our keynote speaker helps senior leaders in organizational transformation through strategy, people, and culture, AI, and tech solutions. He has been a business and HR leader with many large organizations and groups and is recognized for the impact that he brings through thought leadership, strategy, and execution excellence. He is the founder of Orbit Shift, a coaching and consulting practice, and an entrepreneur at heart. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming up on stage our keynote speaker, Mr. Sai Kumar Chandran. <laughs> King, uh, you know, uh, in, in ourselves and hope this creates a base for all of us here uh, to build a new us, a fresh us that we in fact are and create a difference or make a difference in our personal and professional spheres. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for this. Said that for this formality, may I invite upon stage the chairman of the conference organizing committee, Mr. Mohan Oja, accompanied by the executive director of Growth Sellers, Madam Samjana Sharma. Uh, if I may invite, sir, uh, for you to take center stage. This is from all of us the organizers, the participants, as a gesture of gratitude for this very, very valuable and awakening session. Could you, could you, uh, ma'am, could you step forward if we could take one, one more, ma'am, ma'am, something, ma'am? A photo opportunity, please. We've had one. One more. We want to <laughs> take away everything. Center stage, please, sir. Thank you. Thank you one more time. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, as professionals, my occupant is like Bhani Sake. As sometimes, I'm here for like your asano pigeon light my madre here. So, in the very close pair that we are, you know, sometimes we forget the person we are, and then become too much of a professional. And sometimes we become too much of a person and forget what kind of professional or professional we are. I think striking a balance is quite challenging, but this challenge should first start, you know, you should be challenging yourself first before even you wish to or want to venture out to change the, the things around you. And uh, I'm sure this, would, this particular session is uh, helping our thought processes to, you know, uh, in this particular direction. Uh, said that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure this has been a very thought-provoking session. And as you keep your, uh, your, your, your thought uh, juices flowing in your brains, we take a few minutes to uh, put in front of you a presentation from our title sponsor. So my pleasure of inviting up on stage Mr. Sagar Sharma, the head sales and marketing F1 Soft International Private Limited to give us a bit of an information about phone loan. A very warm welcome to you. The floor is all yours. Personally, I think HR is the most underappreciated department in an organization. Um, you guys find out the best talent for the organization, make sure that the new recruit has the best experience while getting onboarded, take care of their workspace, health and safety, training and development, take care of the performance management, ensuring that the individual is working best for the organization and also for themselves, and eventually, Branding your organization 
as the employee of the choice. But still, people hate you, right? <laughs> I mean, it's pretty common to hear people say, oh, it's a little bit of a policy, right? It's probably because HR outlines the rules, the policies, the do's and don'ts, which employees don't like, right? But in COVID-19, everything changed. We had to resort to the new way of working. Working from home was the new norm, and this brought a different set of challenges for the HR. Um, working in a chaotic environment, and if you remember in the first pandemic wave, we didn't know what it was, you know? It was chaotic, it was confusing, and it was so stressful. But the HR managers who managed to extend a positive impact in the lives of their employees actually managed to change that perception and actually got that respect they deserve. But we human beings, you know, we are gifted with a very, very powerful gift, you know, the gift of forgetting, right? I mean, with time we forgot the difficult times we had when there was a fuel crisis. We have forgotten how Havoc was created in the earthquake of 2015, and now we have forgotten to like wear masks, maintain a social distance, and flock ourselves into cinemas to watch RRR, right? Uh, eventually, with time, we'll also forget how far and fetched HR had gone to make our lives comfortable during the pandemic. HR job is seriously very, very difficult. I mean, the kind of things they have to deal with it, it's so abstract like inclusiveness, inclusiveness, diversity, right? These are some heavy things that HR has to deal. Amidst that, they also need to find out, like the question was raised from the floor, right? How do we make people loyal? How do you know what the uh, employees want? How do we motivate them, right? Globally, research shows that uh, employees want three things, like they're on the top of the priority. Um, permanent flexibility to work, commitment from the organization, to their health and uh, well-being. And lastly, purpose of the work in the organization, right? But when I think about it, for a salaried person like me, I mean, hopefully I'll be speaking uh, on behalf of other salaried individuals as well. Salary, though, maybe, is not the most important thing, but for me, it's like lifeline of my livelihood. I mean, I pay the bills, I pay for education of my kids, Right? and many other things. But despite salary being the lifeline, one unexpected event, one visit to the hospital, one big TV in the sitting room, or one getaway with the family, right? or one extra tequila in LOD, <laughs> creates a big tent in your pocket. And the rest of the days, until the next payday, it goes by looking at the calendar, feeling financially crippled. I mean, salary, despite being something important, also tells a story about the individual. The story is so beautiful and exciting. So far, phone loan has helped seven commercial banks discover stories of different individual salaried people. Each individual story is so unique and have, have been able to offer them with the financial assistance when they need it most at the top of their fingertip without collateral, without any documents, and yes, without ad additional burden on the part of HR. <laughs> um, phone loan has embarked on a journey to redefine loan, not as a burden, but, an, uh, but as an opportunity. Not as a hassle, but convenience. Not as a compulsion, but a choice, right? So today, I would like to invite all the members of the HR fraternity present here to embrace this change and be a part of this revolution and provide your employees with an option to have that financial independence they deserve. Um, having said that, if you opt for this, I cannot guarantee that people will start liking you, but I can ensure you that they'll definitely thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much, Sagarji, for this very interesting uh, and important sharing.
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we now move, I mean, are getting ready for the next keynote session of the day. Uh, Okay, uh, apologies for that glitch. Anyways, thank you, thank you. Our title sponsor, Phone Loan, in association with Rego Technologies, Diamond Sponsor, Nepal Bank Limited, Gold Sponsors, MI, Shangri-La Development Bank, supported by Kathmandu World School, Payment Partner, eSaver, endorsed by Social Security Fund and organized by Growth Sellers Private Limited, and that is the Phone Loan Presents HR Meet 2022, ladies and gentlemen. So as you can see, we are now all set for the next uh, keynote of the day, which we've been waiting for for quite a bit. Uh, quite a motivating session to you, Bianco, uh, which is, I'm sure, keeping at least mine, I'm sure everybody else is here, keeping your thought nerves, I mean, thought juices flowing. Uh, HR, HR uh, ka challenges, opportunities, uh, new trends, is they could new trends or best practices, experience, expertise, knowledge, sharing kolagi, yo hub hamile create gorega. So jun annually ha only got the sort. So uh, focusing on HR, we try to uh, share with you, you know, all the aspects and the elements that are surrounding us just in order to help us better the performance and, you know, increase the comfort level in the zones that we all are working. Said that, as a keynote is on industry relation. Now, until we understand industry relation, I'm sure you would agree, it's quite difficult and, and it becomes quite challenging for uh, us as HR professionals in our own niches. So this session is particularly therefore uh, dwelling on understanding the entire uh, dynamics of industry relations and how understanding this can help our performances or even understanding itself. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me introduce to you all our keynote speaker, of this session. I'm so privileged and humbled to be presenting to you or inviting up on stage, Mr. Avadesh Kumar Jha, who's an employee relations expert with 30 years plus of industrial experience in multinational organizations. Core committee member representing employers in drafting and finalizing Labor Act 2074 and Labor Regulations 2075 of Nepal. He served more than 20 years as a member of Employers' Council at the FNCCI, Birgans Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Morong Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and his experience of active engagement with various labor-related governmental organizations is certainly a value added, I'm sure, would be reflected in the, in the session that we are looking forward to. Ladies Faint morning. We'll have to do that once more. Good morning. That's a little better. Looks like all of you have had breakfast now. Good. So it's lovely to be here. Thank you, Mohanji, and the entire team of Growth Sellers for hosting me here. I'm going to try and create a little bit of interaction amongst all of you. Uh, there's a very interesting topic that I'm going to talk about, and there are many facets of what impacts us and our life that we'll talk about. But I want all of you to be interactive through this session. Are we good for that? Yeah. Awesome. So here's the first thing that I want you to do. I want all of you to get up, please, quickly. And move around and find people who you really don't know and ask them two questions. Number one, what makes you feel unsafe in the world today? And question two, what would make you feel safe in the world today? Please go on. I'll hold time for about four to five minutes. Please go around. Please make sure you're talking to people who you don't know. 
quickly. Excuse me. Can we move a little to the side? I need this moved a little to the side. Yeah. Isko thoda idhar kar do, please. That's it. Thank you. Quickly, another two minutes. Please move around. Try to talk to as many people as possible. Please move around. Try to ask these two questions of as many people as possible. Okay, those of you who have found answers, I want some of you to come and tell me what the answer is. Quickly, come up. Here, come on. Come on, come on. Yes. What did you discover? From my side or other side? Both. From my side, Rusty and Hussein, that, that's the fight he's doing. And the whole world Makes you feel unsafe. Like okay. Safe side, humanity is also increasing. All right. Uh, we are coming out to discuss those points openly. Okay. That is the first. All right. Uh, opposite. I mean, uh, others? Like, uh, yeah. Is uh, Umin. Uh, okay. So unsafeness uh, around. All right. And the safeness is uh, knowing others. So social media is also increasing. So Makes sense. Thank you. Cheers. Yes. Okay. And the other person said that he feels unsafe during, like, because of technological advancement. There you go. Okay. Yeah, because uh, AI might be a threat to like, something like that. Okay. Thank you. Just come on, come on, come on. A few of you, come up, come up. Tell me what you've discovered. Yes, quickly. What did you discover? So, you don't need to be Abita on the here. So, uh, while coordinating with my partners, we found the unsafe uh, things like we are having environmental crisis sure. and uh, because of it uh, like we were like kind of surety for global warming in the sure. world and uh, despite of all these things we are still alive and we have faced like so many pandemics like covid sure. and or earthquakes so we feel safe on that time and like uh, we are unsure about like uh, global warming okay crisis. thank you yeah. yeah what did you discover Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you. Settle down, everyone, please. Hmm. Okay. All right. Settle down, please. So quickly, a few more people from the back of the room who have not uh, come up. Can you use the mic and share with the group what did you discover? What's making you feel safe? What's making you feel unsafe? And what did you hear from people? Volunteers, can we just pass on the mic to a few people? Quickly. Fast, let's save time. Let's save time. Who wants to share? Hello. Yes. Uh, it's me, Vestraj Uh I asked, uh, asked you what you answered is the 
what we are already um, preparing in social, uh, so, so, uh, as per so, um, the beliefs of society and uh, everything else. If we are secure on those aspects, we are, I feel safe. And if not uh, safe, uh, if those are not safe in those ways, so, uh, cultural and society, both aspects, uh, okay. I, I don't feel safe. That's what she answered. All right. And about myself, I feel, I feel like if I'm prepared for anything, anything and everything on those aspects, then I'm safe on those things. Back if I'm not well prepared, then I'm not safe. Whatsoever be the matter, whatsoever be the context. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, sir. Hello. Yes. Uh, hello. Good morning, sir. I'm here. Uh, yeah. My name is Samiksha and I represent k &E Engineering Consulting. So I talked with a few of the people here. So... Uh, the people here are like, uh, they, they feel unsafe uh, when uh, about the countries, uh, the global inflation and the countries, sure. the political thing sure. that's going on because of that, sure. most of them feel unsafe. Sure. And, and, and also about, they talked about the infrastructure uh, which they feel unsafe here sure. in Nepal. And sure. what they feel safe is uh, like they, when they are around their like comfort zone and people who know, uh, like whom they know, they feel uh, safe within that uh, sure. area. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. One more input quickly, please. One more input. One more. Who would like to go? Yes, please. Uh, hello and good morning to everyone. I'm Jyoti from Upai City Cargo. So uh, one of my friends from Dabur, uh, I liked her answer. So uh, what she said she felt uh, unsafe about is COVID and what made her feel safe was vaccines. Oh, so <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. So yeah, that's one. And from my side, uh, so what I feel unsafe about is the way we are uh, moving towards, you know, I have this feeling that we are moving towards crisis in a very fast pace. So that's something that makes me feel uh, unsafe. and. Uh, what makes me feel safe is one is stability and support from uh, my close ones and the other thing is that uh, I feel confident that whatever may come I have the confidence that I will overcome it. So that's another thing that uh, makes me feel safe. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. All right. Interesting exercise and we'll continue some of this interaction as we go through the day. Couple of things that I wanted to call out for all of us. Uh, volunteers, just a request. Can we close the door at the end of the hallway? It's creating visual disturbance, please. All right, so with that, just a couple of things. Please make notes as we speak through the day today because I'm going to share quite a few concepts and constructs which will be important for you to take back and do things with this. The other thing, I want you to note down your questions as they come. I'll go through the floor. I'll keep talking for about an hour, about hour, 10 minutes, hour, 15 minutes. And after that, we will do a round of question answers. And so that we can all save time, we would, uh, our volunteers would collect the questions and they will read out so that we can make the best of time. Does that work for everyone? Please. Okay. So let's get started. So as I was preparing for this talk today, there were quite a few questions that were in my mind that what should I leave with you that will make it interesting. Now, through the several months that the HRM magazine has been on, I've been talking about strategy, leadership, and culture constantly and sharing with you various frames. I invite you to take a look at some of those articles because I've been talking about some very important things that matter to the, to the uh, excellence of work, excellence of individuals, excellence of leaders. But today, as I stand up here to talk, one of the things that I wanted to lay stress on is that there is an opportunity in this world for us today to be and become a better individual and a better citizen of the world. Do we agree? Can we all be better? Yes? Yes? Unanimously, I can't hear a yes. Yes? So that opportunity is in all these areas, being a better citizen of the world, not just the country, being a better leader, and also catalyzing a better future for all of us. And that's going to be the, the focus of what I talk through today. I'm going to introduce two frameworks to you, and this is how I have been making sense because my life is not very different from all of your lives, right? I've been there, worked with corporates. I again continue to work with corporates, NGOs, governments today. And what I see, what I feel safe, unsafe, when I was trying to make sense of that, I came up with these two constructs that you see at the bottom, the Todav world, 
I'll let you know what the TODAV stands for. It's an acronym. And there are five phenomena which are impacting our world significantly and our lives. And then I'll talk about an antidote of what all of you could do to do something better. And that cry out that we said that, yes, we can be better citizens. That's what we will work towards. So with that quick introduction, let me ask you a few questions. How many of us would like to grow? Can I see a raise of hands? I can see some people raise two hands there. <laughs> we can't have enough of growth, can we? Absolutely. Now, how many of you would like this? Raise of hands, quickly. Awesome. How many of us would like this? Raise of hands. Yes, awesome. How about this? Contribute to a cause. Lovely. We have a very interested audience in that case. How about this? Yes, be a part of an organization and grow. Awesome, lovely. How about this? Definitely, definitely. Why not? Yeah, how about this? Yeah, on top of agenda? Anybody here who wants to be unhappy? No? <laughs> okay, so I thought so. And what about this? Make the world a better place. Yeah, do we need this more than anything else today? Yes, quite a lot. But imagine if in our everyday life we have these good intentions and we want to do better, right? Do we need to answer these questions? Write them down for yourself, please. Write these questions for yourself. Because these are reflections that even some of the best informed and educated minds are not thinking about today. Two questions that all of us need to answer every single day. And when I refer to the world, the world that essentially is not just Earth, that's my country, that's my society, that's my family, that's my organization, that's anything that could define my immediate world. In about the next one hour, we will talk deeply about this concept, and I want you to scribble down thoughts that come to you. Because this conversation that I'm having with you, I want each one of you to take this conversation and have these with as many people as possible. Is that a commitment? Yes? All those people who said we want to make the world a better place? So please have this conversation with others exactly the same way as I'm having this with you. So with those two questions in mind, let's use a, an image to think about this. And I'm going to talk about the summary of my entire talk, and then I'm going to go to the subject at hand. Imagine now, with all those good intentions, growing, wanting to do better, contributing to the world, this is us, any one of us, wanting to do things. And imagine if the world around us is like this. What's happening? What's happening? Louder, please. Chaos, okay, what else is happening? Confusion, what else is happening? Sorry? Sure, unstructured, what else? Disturbances, okay, what else? Conflicts, and what does that do to our quality of life? Degrades, absolutely sure, beautiful. That's the reason why I chose to talk about the topic that I'm going to talk about today, because there is this chaos that we are living in. And there is chaos, not just from our immediate families, but the society, the nation, the world. We know at least five conflicts that are happening in the world at this point in time. The whole talk between, uh, about Ukraine and Russia, the COVID crisis, economy, Tons of those things happening. Now, if this is degrading the quality of our life, let's look at another way of living our life. What if we were doing this? How would this change our lives? I'll play that back for you. What if we were creating very strong identities for ourselves? What if we were having clarity? What if we had focus? How would it change things? I want you to write this down for yourself. 
ask yourselves this question. If I have a lot more of identity, a lot more of clarity, a lot more of focus, what would that do? If I have a lot more of connections, if I have a lot more of contracts and contributions, what would that do for us? If I have a lot of meaningful messaging, and if I'm contributing, if I'm being a model to the world, how will it change? How will it change? Can I have some answers? Quickly. How will it change? Sorry? Oh, there's a change within, definitely. And as that change within happens, what will happen? There's chance that we can contribute to less chaos around us, obviously. What else? What else? We can become better influencers, definitely. Others? Can I have some other answers from the back of the room, please? Quickly. Quick ones, come on. Uh, you'll have to be a bit louder. Sure, a proactive approach, okay. What else? What else will happen? How will our world change? So let me pause here. I want you to get up again, and I want you to find a couple of people to speak with. And I want you to ask that if we change the way we are living, and if we do these three things, the three circles, how will it change our world? Please, can I have all get up? and talk to somebody who you don't know again. Talk to a total stranger. Ask this question. How will this change our world? I'll come down and have a chat with some of you. Quickly. Please speak with people who you don't know, total strangers. I can see some of us getting very comfortable after breakfast and still sitting on tables. Let's get up, let's get going. How will the world change? How will the world change? Change for the better. Definitely. Awesome. How will it change? How will the world change if you do these three things? Uh, life goes easily. Beautiful. What else? Uh, everything will be settled down. Would you like a settled down life? Yes. Yeah. Think about that. Yes. Yes. How will the world change? No. How will the world change? Yes, how will it change your life? Still my life. And the world. Think, yeah. I'll come back to you. Excuse me. Beautiful, beautiful. You'll cut down on distractions. Lovely thought, thank you. Excuse me. So, how will the world be a different place? Hi, sir. Yes. So, uh, what do you think? Uh, what we have realized is uh, if all these elements are found within oneself, then we are seeing actually a positive role to the society. Beautiful. Seeing, uh, changes in the society. So, if an individual is living uh, within a society which has these elements, then an individual can be a better person. Beautiful. And as you become better individuals for the society, how does it change your life? How does it change your family's life? Exactly, and we can make a better world with this. Thank you, thank you, please. Cheers. Yes. Leftist offer. Hello. Come in here. Leftist offer clarity and identity among the people. Beautiful. In the whole, as well as within the nation. Beautiful. That too. Beautiful. And that, as that happens, our own society settles down. Mm. Very nice. Mm. Things like those will stop, isn't it? 
Yeah, thank you. Too still to talk, all of you? Yeah? What did you discover? How will the world change? Beautiful. Thank you. Yes, guys. How would the world change? Uh, every individual has actually uh, equal contribution. Mm -hmm. So, like, uh, if one uh, contributes positively, also it's really nice. It's really important. Thank you. That also. Ownership. That as well. Yes. What did you discover? Okay. Sure. Cool. Thank you. <coughs> All right. Please sell down. All right. Please sell down. Come back. Come back. Come back to your seats. Sell down, sell down, please. Thank you. So it was lovely speaking to some of you. And almost unanimously, people were saying that if we do these three things, the quality of our life improves. The quality of our uh, contributions, the society, that changes significantly. The world becomes a better place. Yeah? I can still hear a lot of murmurs. Do we still need time to talk? I'll wait for you to sell down. Hi, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Sai. Yes. I'm here, Rast, at the corner. I would like to give you answers to your questions with the quotations. Mm -hmm. Is sure. that okay? Yes, please, go on. Right, so my name is Rupesh Shrestha, and I represent Marriott as the Director for Learning and Development. And let me try to give you answers with the quotations like this. Mm. The quotation goes, I was clever. Yesterday, I was clever because I wanted to change the world. Mm -hmm. Today, I am wise because I am changing myself. Thank you. <laughs> Interesting. Lovely. Thank you. And that's the sort of spirit that we need from each one of us to make a better world around us. So on that note, the idea of today's talk and the rest of this exploration will be, how can you learn something here today which you can use to improve and change and better life? So that's the overall theme of what I'm going to talk about. And with that little introduction, let me actually get to the whole story of why I decided to speak about this topic. Now, let me build some context for all of us here. If you compare life to what it was about 20, 30 years earlier. Is it a different world? So what's different in today's world? What's different? Easy access to things, yeah? Okay, what else? <laughs> Wi-Fi. <laughs> so, you know, very soon, Wi-Fi is almost going to become life-fi for some of us. Yeah? So without the Wi-Fi, we feel lifeless, many of us. Yeah. Well, in some senses, yes, that's the chaos also that's happening. But because we have so much access to technology, people are becoming virtual for us. Yes, indeed. So there's a bunch of trends that I would like to call out for us. If you see, there's a lot more of technology around us in today's world as against what was there earlier. There's also a lot more of knowledge and information flow where we are wherever we are in this world. In fact, some of us saw this, that even during the COVID times, universities, schools, education continued for most parts of the world, obviously where there was a telecommunications access. And if it was not there, then it was a problem. Uh, there is also this uh, uh, connectedness that we have 
with our loved ones from wherever. There was a time when you used to wait for messages, letters, etc. But today you can literally reach out people from anywhere, everywhere, at any given point in time. There's also that whole real-time sense to the whole world. We get, come to know of things almost about as soon as it happens, provided you're paying attention to what is happening around there. And then uh, a lot of transactions per day, a whole bunch of uh, different things that organizations are doing today. And there's a significant amount of change that is happening out there. And lastly, there's also this opportunity that we have today. Almost anything that is a human need also has business sense attached to it. How many of you have seen this happen? Yeah? Several kinds of new services that are coming up to meet human needs. And this is one of the greatest opportunities of the times that we're living in. That almost every single human opportunity is getting converted into a business need. And lastly, humans feel that they need a lot more. Is there a feeling like this? Yes? Yes? And because those last two things are there, that almost every human need is getting converted into a business, and then because humans need a lot more, businesses are thriving. Economies are growing. Money is circulating a lot better than possibly there was. I'm not sure if COVID had happened about 30 years back, how severe would have been the impact of that, I guess, against today, when there were still people out there helping, trying to get things done, you know, getting groceries to medicines to so many other things to be out there available to people even when they were locked down at homes. So much has changed in this world. But despite all of this, in this world today, there's a whole host of chaos out there and a whole host of opportunity. I will call out a few of these opportunities which are really changing the world and the chaos out there which is really creating problems for all of us. Please make a note of some of these things because when you start having conversations about the TODAV world, which is the concept I'm going to introduce, you will need to think about some of these things, right? So in line with whatever we were talking about, there is an opportunity for us to build a better future, yes? And we have access to technology today using which we can improve the world. How many of you have seen this? Yes? Technology today to take care. How many of you, does anybody drive an electric vehicle here? An EV? Anyone yet? Or anybody whose families own? Yeah, couple of us there. So you see technology like this is coming up so that we can uh, you know, change the situation with pollution in our cities and so many other things. There is technology to manage garbage and technology to manage so many diseases. So all of us are trying to build a better world and that's an opportunity which is there. The world is a lot more connected like we were speaking. There is a balance in many things which were very imbalanced at an earlier point in time. Like more than ever, as much as you hear of challenges on human rights, there is so much more of activism that has succeeded on human rights and people are doing so much better. So for almost all negative news that you hear, there are four or five or six things which are happening which are very good in this world. Many times we don't hear it because we're not paying attention to that. Similarly, there's a lot of platforms to share opinions. Many of you, us youngsters, are sharing opinions. Where do you share your opinions? What platforms? Insta. Insta. <laughs> almost unanimously Insta. Okay, what else? Twitter, okay. Others, Facebook, yeah. Uh, you, you're forgetting one of the most common places where you keep sharing your opinions. WhatsApp, yeah. How many of you have WhatsApp on your phone? Yeah, <laughs> look at that. <laughs> WhatsApp is being used by more people than possibly Insta or any of these others. And see, that's where constantly you're sharing your point of views, okay. Now, there's also this uh, opportunity for many people to contribute at one point in time, uh, individuals are not even thinking of working in social sectors, in NGOs, etc. Today, tons of youngsters are moving that place. Mid-career people are moving out of their careers and beginning to contribute to the world. So those are all changes which are happening. Similarly, learning avenues are immense. How are some of you learning other than the formal learning today? What avenues do you use? What avenues? Okay, Kindle, what else? LinkedIn learning, okay? Okay, yeah. So tons of those opportunities exist which possibly didn't exist. About 15 years back, in fact, let's go back to about 25, 30 years when uh, I was just about getting out of college. At that point in time, if you had to learn something new, you necessarily have to have that 
interesting card. What was that card? Library card, yeah? So if you didn't have access to your library card and if you by chance lost your library card, it was a nightmare back then when I was growing up, yeah? But today you don't need that library card. The world is a library at your fingertips. And thanks to Google, right? How many of you Google things, right? Yeah. It's very interesting. I was having this conversation with a doctor friend of mine. He says, invariably, 99% of the patients have Googled everything about themselves and then they come. <laughs> right? So, uh, you know, so, so I was asking, so what then? He says, you know, doctors are beginning to have an identity crisis now. <laughs> so, interesting things are happening out there in this world. Similarly, uh, Indeed, people are moving up the economic order. As much as we hear about wars and famines and deaths and isolation in society, invariably the truth is also there are more and more people moving up the so-called standards of society now. Question is who defines those standards? That's another debate for another day. But definitely people are doing much better. How many of us have seen these happening in from the native places that we are coming? People are doing much better? Yes? Yeah? Absolutely. Now, while all of this is happening, there's a bunch of problems that's happening in the world today. Let's focus, pay attention to that. And just some questions. How many of you around you seen suicide rates increasing? Yes? There are many people who are worried about money, continuity of income. Yes? So all of these things are happening. And here are a few trends that I've been seeing continuously from the places that I work. To begin with, things are collapsing for no reason. Suddenly there was a beautiful brand, a big company doing very well. And then another day, it just vanishes, right? We've heard so many higher and fire stories about brands in the recent times. Without taking any names, some of these are very scary at times. And it's not just companies which are collapsing, economies which are collapsing, right? Today, there are at least three to four com countries out there which are facing severe challenges. And some of us have grappled with these challenges. Similarly, people are taking more vacations, more going out, weekend trips, but still they are unhappy, right? True? Yeah, I, I can hear true coming from the crowd. So it looks like there is a vacation crowd here, which in spite of the vacation is unhappy. Ask, why does that happen? And that's the chaos in the world today. Similarly, the, a lot of people are feeling purposeless. And I've heard this very commonly, that I don't like what I'm doing, let me find another job. People find that job, six, eight, 12 months. I can see some people hiding and laughing there. So it <laughs> looks like it's appealing to the trend. What happens when you change that job? Again, you feel purposeless. There is this whole movement happening in the world saying find purpose, find purpose, find purpose. But maybe somebody didn't stop you and told you that the first place where you need to find purpose is where you are with whatever you have. How many of us are actually even taking care of what is in our hands? as against tossing it and going out and looking for some bigger purpose. It's a big problem in the world today. All right? Now, if some of you are interested, you can go to my YouTube channel. There's a video that I posted a few years back that while you look for purpose, please don't make these mistakes. Take a look at that video. And I've spoken about elaborately about this problem, which is there with not just youngsters, but people in middle age, people in late age. And there is so much of crisis happening out there because of that. Another thing. There's a lot more of isolation. Now imagine we are connected on one end and we are still isolated. Why? Because the virtual person is becoming so much more important than the real person. Right? Are there friends and family that you have spoken to just half an hour back but you've not seen for months? Yes? And that's where isolation is coming. There are times when you're sitting in the house with your entire family, and everyone is on a device. And people are not interacting. There are times when I have seen some of my friends and their families, they're messaging each other from one room to another. I mean, that could be the heights of isolation that you go through. But yes, that's the truth of the society today. And then, we are further away from oneness. The world is getting divided. There are challenges, there are speculations, there are fights. There is also this feeling of meaninglessness that a lot of people are carrying, right? So not just purpose, but even meaning is missing in whatever things are and people are doing. And lastly, all of this is leading us where? To a lot of unsatisfied uh, people around us. 
So that's the world that we are living in. And that's why I asked all of you to ask this question. Now go back to the question that I asked you, which is feelings of safety and you know, feeling of lack of safety. So a lot of those things will be related to where these are. Are you with me on this? Yes? Now, as youngsters, as young minds, as responsible people in this society, as people working in the organized sector, my encouragement to all of you is begin paying attention to some of these things that are happening. While there are those green things which are good, there are these red things which need to be tackled, which are immediate problems of our society. And if this is the chaos that is out there, the world, and this is the TODAF that I was talking about, the world today is becoming a lot more of transactional. It is a lot more opportunistic. It's a lot more divisive and getting divided continuously. And it is so much more antsy, agitated, restless. People are not getting along with each other. And at the end of it, what's happening, everything is too variable, constantly changing, non-predictable. It is at a point where things are crashing, literally, at the drop of a hat. And this is what the world today needs to draw its attention to faster than anything else. Every single individual is responsible for this. Now, this is not a problem of governments or, 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 or institutions or of people in responsible positions. This is the problem of every single individual on Earth. Because nobody else is making us transactional. Who's making us transactional? We are. Who's making us opportunistic? We are. Who's letting others divide us? We are. Who's choosing to stay antsy and not solve that problem? It's us. And at the end of it, if the world is variable and you break that down, who is really variable? Ask yourselves this question. How many of us are unpredictable in our lives? We are? Yes? And some of us have got that feedback from our loved ones and around us. So the world is but an image of everything. And you know what? The whole is sometimes greater than the sum of the parts. So when we have millions of us who are living like this, the world becomes so much more of a challenging place to live in for everybody else. Okay? How many of you are willing to take responsibility of this? Yes? Want to do something? And that's where you begin to start changing the world if you realize some of these things. Let me take you a little deeper into what each one of these things means so just so that you understand absolutely correctly. So what's the transactional world? The transactional world is busier than ever. We have a long list of things to do. Things just don't complete. We are running all around. And the biggest one, FOMO. I'm sure I don't need to share what FOMO means to the uh, insta generation that is sitting out here, everybody thinks that there's something that we're missing out on, right? When was the last time a new pub opened in town and you rushed to it, right? So I don't even have to say that possibly you're wanting to be there the day one, day two, day three, maybe the first week. So that's how the FOMO world is. So the opportunistic world and then is becoming a race. So the more you get stuck in transactions, the more opportunistic you become. The more you want to maximize, get the most out of everything, you're trying to inch out the maximum benefit from everything. And last but not the least, this makes us so random that sometimes even the best stimuli is failing. Product loyalty is not there. Brand loyalty is not there. You're choosing, trying to make the best of everything that there is. Uh, how many of us heard about uh, the great resignation? Have you read articles? Yes, many of us. And many of us in HR have dealt with problems like these. Where is all of that coming from? That's coming from an intensely opportunistic workforce out there. Many of us are contributing to that. Think, how can I change that? The divisiveness, and then what happens? As every individual becomes more opportunistic and transactional, there is a bunch of people out there ready to divide us. Everyone is trying to come out and tell you, do this, <coughs> you'll be better. Do that, you'll be better. How many of you have gone to a bookstore recently? Bookstore? Yeah, many of us? Okay, next time you visit a bookstore, take a look at this. Which is the biggest section of books that you'll find? Any ideas? Sorry? Self-help, okay. So, 
actually it is religion and spirituality mostly the first category the second category is self help all right now walk into the self help section invariably of all the books which are there about 40 50% of the books will tell you how to make a million dollars in 6 months yes yeah forget about that part look at the other part of the books again another 40 50% of the books will be telling you how to deal with yourself because you can't make a million dollars in 6 months so what's the world doing when we become opportunistic there are people ready to divide us they will challenge us they will bring the worst out of us and that's where it's important for each one of us minds beautiful minds sitting here to take notice of this and say i need to stop i need to do something else i need to change my approach what that is we will get to in some time but what is ansi and as people divide us what happens to us we become restless we start fighting we start getting anxious and everything then becomes into a negative loop of things and invariably what happens you don't pay attention to the 3 4 5 good things that are happening around you what do you pay attention to the negatives an unfortunate truth in this world today is for every negative thing that is happening there are five to six good things that are happening most of us are not paying attention to this and that's the reason why we are becoming more and more and more antsy every single day and which is where we are making others antsy around us so please start looking at the blessings of your life yeah like a simple blessing how long have you been sitting in this room how long an hour about an hour yeah power's not gone off nobody's invaded the room the roof is still up there you don't need to look there <laughs> it'll stay there yeah all of these are good things but we're just not paying attention to this you're thinking about what's that friend of mine doing what's that i mean poor boss of mine doing right or what are they doing what's that thing what's that conflict when will that collapse happen that's where people's thoughts are so that negative thinking is all coming from this antsiness that we are living in and that makes the world an extremely variable challenged and unsettled place for us scary scary yes who's creating it so if any of you raised your hands and said i want to make the world a better place first own this place that we have created this is the garbage that we are collecting as human beings today and this is the garbage that we need to come out of is there a way is there a way yes is there a unanimous yes awesome so let's explore that and let's explore how we can improve the quality of life that the stodav is creating for us yeah so what's the antidote for us antidote is beginning to ask questions like this how do i be clear about things how can i develop clarity how can i be logical about things how can i be uh, finding a little bit more of peace what's the direction that i need to move into how do i change my responses how do i not get carried away how do i not lose my head when others are losing their head how do i help the world around me those are some questions that we would need to ask i want all of us to get up again for the last 5 minutes now and the questions that are on the screen i again want you to find somebody who you don't know a complete stranger and see how many of those questions that you can answer for your life i'll pause here for about 5 minutes please can i have all of you move around quickly find someone new please someone totally new a stranger and try to get this perspective from them how do we do this how do we solve this problem
if any of you wants to have a chat with me, I'm down here. If any of you wants to come and speak with me, I'm down here.
All right, settle down. Hope you have had some interactions. Settle down, please. Settle down. Settle down. Welcome back. Settle down. OK, so you have the mics available. I would like to know some of these answers from you, especially how do I not get carried away? Can some of you answer this question, please, quickly? Volunteers, can you please pass the mics? Who would like to answer quickly? OK, that table there. Volunteers, can we get the mic there? Yes, please. Volunteers, can I get can we get the mic please there? Or whoever has the mic, can you just pass the mic there to the table? Hi, please? good morning. This is Neeta Rana. I represent the Golcha group. So uh, basically, how do I not get carried away? You, I spoke to a very young, nice young lady mm. from Medicity. She also handles HR. Sure. Uh, so she was saying she remains very focused. She does not. Uh, she does not get carried. Remains very focused at her task. And I personally, I do a lot of listening, mm -hmm. and I don't react immediately. Okay. All right. Listening and not reacting. Thank you. Others. There was somebody there on that table in the middle raising the hands. Can we get the mic there, please? Uh, so good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Nishma from Nepal Pharmaceuticals. I just had a conversation with Selena regarding this. Uh, so do we need to answer everything, or we are just answering on how do I not get carried away? So especially for uh, how, how do I not get carried away, uh, she just gave a very beautiful answer that like uh, we need to, uh, you know, uh, identify which things are urgent and which things are important. Because okay. like in many of the times what we do is uh, we are so much occupied with the things which are urgent and important but no, not so much necessary uh, for the th things which is uh, needed to be done today. So we really need to identify things and uh, especially uh, while working in the organization, what happens is that many of the times, you know, uh, you will have a less of the productive tension and, uh, you know, more of the unproductive tensions because you <coughs> keep on taking each and everything. I think you should segregate that, uh, in my opinion. Thank All you right. so much. Okay, thank you. Can some of you also answer this question from the perspective of being human and not just uh, an organizational employee? Yeah? Uh, we'll just Hi. come to you in a minute. Yes, please. Uh, I met Nita Rana from Golcha organization, where she said that uh, for the clarity, what she does is communication, a better communication for that. Okay. And a thing I liked about her is she don't get run away with the tax. She do not do hurry. She just listen, remain calm, uh, okay. and uh, she does meditation every day to have a bit of peace in herself. Okay. Okay. And. Uh, yeah, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Others? Hello. Yes, please. Is it okay? I if you feel like clapping, you can clap. So <laughs> you don't need to be so restrictive about clapping. Open your hearts and clap, guys. Go on. Yes. Good morning. Uh, this is Hema Gurung from Fleur Himalayan Limited. So as per the... Hema, I can't see you. Where are you? Okay. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Is it okay? I sit and speak. Uh, yeah, please, please. Be okay. comfortable. Uh, Regarding the carried away is that uh, how I, uh, re it's regarding myself, uh, I just want to uh, speak. So uh, regarding this uh, carried away uh, thing is mainly I have my uh, week planned, that's how I do it. And uh, when my week is planned, mm -hmm. and then uh, I have my proactive actions taken according to the, you know, certain things. For example, mm -hmm. I have my Mother's Day coming, okay. that's how I, uh, you know, I prefer, I plan that a half an hour or okay. one hour given to my mom mm -hmm. and then uh, 30 minutes to my child okay. and then I have my own art class, I draw. So that's how Lovely. I uh, keep myself grounded. 
that's how I, what I wanted to share. Thank, Thank you. you. Art is beautiful. Do Thanks. more of it. All right. <laughs> Thanks. Yes, go on, please. Uh, good, good morning, everyone. Uh, so uh, while uh, talking to a few of uh, the HRs here, mm. Um, I would like to answer the last question. How do I help the world around me? Mm. And the most common answer was by being kind and by being human first. Beautiful. So uh, uh, that's one. And the second one is how do I, how do we find a bit of a peace? I think, uh, and so many of the uh, people said that peace, uh, you cannot force uh, to have someone to have peace, you know. It should come from within. So maybe have a clarity and uh, first, you know, Think about your own peace, your self-peace, your inner peace, and then, you know, then uh, look for the others. That's what I heard, so wanted to share that. Thank you so Beautiful. much. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Clap heartfully, guys. Come on. <laughs> you know, uh, the more I travel and more I interact with people, this is one thing that I see people not doing sufficiently, that sharing their appreciation when they hear something nice. So next time you clap, clap heartfully, yeah? Okay. Others, can we have a couple of more point of views? Anybody else who wants to share? There you go. Oh, the mic was right next to you. You let so go of it. <laughs> no, no. Can we get the mic back here to this table? Thank you. Now you're spoiled for choices. <laughs> All right, go on. Okay, um, so I'd like to answer in uh, order. And uh, for me, how do I uh, get clarity? It's uh, something I learned from my uh, head. And she uh, taught me that you need to uh, prioritize things first mm -hmm. and uh, get one thing done at a time uh, okay. according to your priority. So uh, for the next question, uh, how do I find peace? So it's not easy always to take things easy, uh, you know, um, mm. in an uh, easy way, you know. So uh, for peace, what I do is I take a pause uh, once in a while, even sure. uh, when it's uh, stressful, sure. I take a step back sure. and uh, I just take a pause uh, that brings, that makes me grounded. Sure. So that's what I do. Um, and the next question I'd like to uh, answer is how do I um, not lose my head while others are? Sure. So uh, I talked with a few people and I uh, found that it's not that easy. Uh, it's easier said than done actually. Uh, but uh, when something goes wrong, I just take a step back. Uh, I do not react at that time, sure. and uh, I reflect on those things and then get back to it later. So I respond and not react. And how do I help the world around me? So uh, this uh, is from my personal experience. What I have found is uh, when you are becoming a, a you know, kinder person yourself, that has an impact on other people as well. That too. So uh, just uh, the, your way of being helps uh, other people change as well. That also sure. has an Im influence and impact on other people. Sure. So, uh, just by being kinder myself, sure. uh, I try to make uh, that change. Sure. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to jump right back into this for us to build this a little better. Okay. Now, one of the things that I began the whole session with was saying that we need to be better individuals, better leaders, and a catalyst. So here is a little bit of food for thought of what is in our control and what can be better. Today, the world that we live in, what you intake is completely in your control, right? And I'll invite you to write down these factors and think about these. How can I control the news that I consume? How can I control what I read? How can I control a little bit more of what I hear? Right? There's tons of content out there. Not all of it may be real. Not all of it may be true. Not all of it may be really helpful to who you are, where you are. Most importantly, not all of it may actually have been created by an expert who's an authority in that field. Is this making sense? Right? So next time you're reading, you're understanding, you're listening to something, one of the first questions that you need to ask is, is this person really an expert? Is this person really real? Or is this person somebody who because they have an opinion, they're just expressing that opinion. And that's one dangerous thing that's happening in our world today, that we are listening to too many opinions instead of real facts about things. So while you control your intake, the other thing that you could look at is controlling your curiosity, being curious. How many of us sitting in this room are curious? Yeah, 
I can see about 50% hands going up. How many of you are purposefully curious that you want to learn and become better? Okay, even lesser hands are going up now. Now, this is again another problem that a lot of us have, and I'll leave that word with you, being purposefully curious. How can we do that? How can we ask this, that whatever I do, that five, 10, 15 minutes that I spend on Insta, actually it's much more than that, right? So whatever time I spend on Insta or Facebook or any of the other platforms, nothing wrong with using these platforms, is that making me better? Am I looking for things that will improve my life or am I just cluttering my head? How many of you go there to check the likes on your message? Or to check the likes on the rival's message? Useless pursuit of your time. If you really want assurance, be kind to somebody in real life. Create value somewhere in real life. Those likes that you get on some of these platforms are worthless, really. They're not telling you anything at all. Right? Because if somebody wanted to really give you a feedback, they would have written out a message for you. Have you noticed this? That many of us, and on certain messages you will see 100,000, a few uh, lakh, a few million likes, but you will find very few messages there. Somebody who genuinely wants to give you a kudos will give you a message, not that thumbs up. Think about it this the next time. What can you do to control your consistency? Can you show up as a good person, consistent person? How many of you exercise here? Very few. How many of you exercise consistently? Okay, let me ask you this nice question. How many of you spend money on that Nike, Reebok, shoe, etc., and you're not going running? <laughs> now hands will go up, yeah? So, you know where consistency is lacking, right? You you go buy those expensive clothes or those branded products to really say, I'm going to focus on my fitness, but really don't do anything about it. New Year resolution, birthday resolution, some other resolution, somebody talks to you, then a resolution. But where are all those resolutions? Sorry? <laughs> Particularly that one, isn't it? Particularly the New Year. There are some people who actually wait for the New Year's Eve so that they can change. Then the only thing that changes is the calendar. <laughs> Nothing else. <laughs> then they again wait for the next year, right? Uh, then there are those who will say, this time, this is the last time I'm going to enjoy. <laughs> so all of that. So please bring a little bit more consistency to your life rather than throwing all of this time away. See, frankly, you and I have met here on, on this particular day, on 29th of April, 2022, even if you don't change your life, 10 years down the line, if God's gracious, our life will still be there. But ask this question, that if for these 10 years, you were to do something consistently for yourself every single day, would your life be better? That's what you need to think about. Forget about the time that's gone by. Forget about anything else. But look at the time that's in front of you. If every day, half an hour, you were to take out for yourself and be consistent, see how your life will change. And that's what you need to do instead of saying, I have no time. And this is becoming a common excuse for a lot of us, right? Take some time out from the social media activities that you do, some wasteful pursuits that you do, right? Trying to half sleep. Uh, what's, what's one of the biggest hobbies in this world? No. No, it's not sleeping. No, one of the, you know, so all the, all the best video games in this world will have lesser popularity than the game of snooze snooze. Imagine how life would be if the snooze button was taken away, right? Okay. Be in control of your change. Be in control of it. Ask, what do I need to change? What do I need to improve? How do I need to do better? The COVID crisis shook up a lot of people and they decided that I want to do something else in my life, not just be in the profession that I am. There are many people who developed a second, third interest. They're developing capabilities. They have set up timeline for yourself. What's your plan? How are you changing for your future? And this change is not about 
wanting to own a house or buy the next big car or something else. This change is really, how do you become a better person out there? And be in control of your choices in that change. Be in control of your own senses of what you see, what you understand. Because when you get into control of those choices and those senses, your senses, you will have a better chance to do a lot more with your life. And then choose how much distance you keep from things. Right? There are times that you need to have positive distance from things. And there are times when you need to have a negative distance from things. Right? Now here's something that happened to most of us while we were growing up. Did you have your parents tell you that Stay away from those people. They're not good for your life. Have you heard this? Consistently, all of us. And then people say there is generational difference. There is no generational difference. Every parent says that to every child. But look at the other way around. How many of us realize that there are some people who are not good for our lives? But we are still with them. Happens? Almost all of us sitting here have those people in our life we are refusing to distance ourselves from. We are continuing to suffer. Why? On the other hand, all of us know we are getting distant from some people in our life. Yes? But we are not doing anything for that distance. We are not reducing that distance, knowing very clearly that if we continue like this, that distance is going to eat up that relationship. But we are not doing anything about it. We are continuing to remain transactional. Why? Why does this happen? That there are some relationships into which we are smoking in time and not getting anything out of it and some relationships which would really improve our life we are not giving it time that's a lack of consistency the choices our senses not being in control that is us not having the right insights in life that is us not practicing engagement with our own life that is us not owning up our own journey. We are being at the mercy of others. We are being at the mercy of whatever things are which are happening in our life. My invitation to all of you, you have a brilliant life ahead of you. Whatever the number of years, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, whatever the number of years you have, can you own your journey? That's a question that you need to ask. That's a question that you need to answer. How many of you want to own up your journey? Yes? You want to make it a better journey? Then why aren't you doing it? Why won't you do it? What are you waiting for? Whose invitation are you waiting for to change your own journey? You don't need anybody's invitation. Yeah? Okay? So, what can help you with this Todab world? Here is something coming from my experience and what I've been talking to with people and this is across the globe that I've been talking to people from all age groups consistently from 20 year olds all the way to 60 70 year olds the category that I work with and a lot of children young children that I work with one of the biggest things that can help us with our life today more than ever are these three things values culture and tradition in fact Yesterday, I was having a very interesting question with uh, Mohanji from uh, Grotzilla. And Mohanji and I were talking about how the tradition of marriage has gone through so many changes in the recent times. Right? About 15, 20, 25 years back, the constructs of marriages in most of our societies used to be 5, 6, 7, 10 day affair, maybe even a month long affair. Yeah? Some of us seen those? But what is it today? It's becoming more of a cocktail party. Most of us don't even stop to realize that those rituals, those traditions that used to be practiced, they used to create positive energy. Right? Uh, talk to many minds, not just young minds, but even people in their middle or late age. You talk to them about subjects like astrology. You talk to about them about scriptures, about our ancient texts, about chanting. They will raise an eyebrow on you and say, that's superstition. Really? Really? Is it superstition? There's a science behind most of those things which we don't realize. So my encouragement to all of you here, while you're 
running your corporate race to become a VP and something and something and something else. First stop and understand, have you even owned up your own culture, your own family's traditions? How many of you, when you were growing up, had a temple in your house? Raise your hands. Your parents had a temple in your house? Yes? Most of them? Respect? Is that it? See, this is where culture is mutating. There are some strange English words which are coming and replacing the understanding of our culture. The act of joining your hand was at one point in time symbolic of me or you or any of us bowing to the divine in the other. That is what it meant. Everybody used to believe that there is divine in the other person. I'll give you a contrasting belief. If your foot touches somebody, what do you do? You do this, right? So you're doing that without really remembering what's the understanding. And that's remembering an act and not remembering the tradition. Is it making sense? So one of my biggest invitations to all of you is please don't get lost in your corporate race. Go back to your culture, your tradition. The, the country that you live in, the society that you live in has a beautiful history. Does it have? Yes, sure. Absolutely confident. How many of you know in and out of it? How many of you are owning up this tradition? Do that. It will make a great difference to your life. It will prevent people from outside coming and telling you what you should be doing. It will prevent people from teaching you English word. Respect. This is not respect. This is bowing to the divine. Right? It will teach you the real essence of what it is. So that's one of my first invitations. Are you with me, everyone? Yeah? So please do something about this. And then, you need to develop informed families, informed friends. You need to have a lot more purposeful living, choosing things, not just alone. Remember, if you're going to be alone in dealing with what you're dealing with, you're going to struggle. You need people around you. And one of the simplest places where you find people around you are who? Friends and family. How much are you investing in friends and family? How many of us have quality dialogues with our families? Yeah? Some of us. Many don't. Many don't have the time. Right? These days we have a concept of weekend families. Family is only seen on weekends. Or you have vacation families. When you take a vacation, you are the safest with your family, so you vacation with them. Other than that, where is family? What are you doing with that family? Ask yourselves these questions, right? Many of us sitting here have cousins that we have not even spoken to in a long time. Just the two previous generations, ask your fathers, grandfathers, mothers, grandmothers, how close were they to their cousins? Were they close? Where are we losing our roots? Some of us don't even know how big our family trees are. Does anyone know their family tree here? How many people are there in their family? Hardly any hands would go up now. Just a generation back, people knew this. Why? Why are we losing family? Why? We're losing family because there is Insta, followers. Yes? What are those followers doing for us? Will your followers pray for you? Think about it. What are you trading? And then, Professional fraternities, many of you, how many of you are engineers in this room? Engineers, anybody? Commerce graduates, science graduates, right? HR professionals, oh, the maximum. <laughs> okay, so these are all professional fraternities. Become a part of such professional fraternities. Come for conversations. Learn, exchange. Those are things that will help you. And definitely, you will need a bunch of guides and mentors. People who can share things with you which will shift your life. How many of you have a mentor in life? Can I see your hands up? Mentor? Less than 2% in the room. Less than 2%. Find a mentor in life, my friends. Find somebody who can challenge you to the core. Somebody who's been there, done things. Somebody who you will listen to. Don't think that what will a person 20, 30 years elder to me teach me. My generation is different. Actually, 
how many of us want growth in this room respect yeah money comforts yes that's what your previous generation also wanted there's nothing different it's just that you want it faster than them they were ready to wait till their 50s to get it you're not ready to wait for your 30s to get it simple difference so find a mentor you will highly likely progress are we good any questions on this right these are things that i'm going to encourage you to do in your life so that your lives can be better 6 months 12 months 18 months down the line do these things and you will see how your life changes for the better and you will have so much more of meaning so much less of the chaos that's happening around you in this world so just picking up i spoke about the todav world the transactional opportunistic divisive and c variable world so as much as i called that out to make meaning my way of making meaning of how to stay out of the todav world is this that become mindful become inquisitive become deep right become assured and become sensitive sensible that's my invitation to all of you young brilliant minds if you can do these five things become lot more mindful become lot more inquisitive become deep in your lives really deep experts in life become really really grounded and become self assured you don't need to have those likes to make you feel good that is being assured you don't need others to tell you you're doing well in life you know it you don't need to have milestones achieved to know that you are a real worthy human being you don't crave for attention from that partner who's not giving you attention that is being assured you don't have to wait for the promotion to tell you you're doing a good job you already know that you're doing a good job that is being assured so when you become mindful inquisitive and deep you will become assured and if you are an assured human being you will become sensible is it making sense there is a solution and the solution is us and that's what the world needs to do today every single individual every single human being so that the people who are dividing us cannot divide us anymore together we can and that's what we need to remember okay so just some quick details for you what is being mindful it's being present it's being healthy it is being thoughtful it is being deliberately thoughtful inquisitive is about wanting to know the truth especially wanting to believe only that which can be verified <coughs> how many of you send forwards yes we do facebook insta whatsapp how many times do you verify those forwards before you send them rarely no think about why we do that some of us may others may not okay what is being deep being deep is about practicing being purposeful changing in time knowing what we need to change right and being assured is being systematic understanding things being focused right? and lastly being sensible is about leaving this place a better world than we find it leaving everything better than we ever found it like in this conference you can ask this yourself this question everyone that i speak with am i leaving that person that human being a better human being than i found that person to be that's an inquiry to make helps is miras clear to all of us cool so how do you live this now here are simple tips for you ultimately all of you have to go back to an organization to a society to your families and do things how do you create this change from here on from everything that i said some simple steps for all of you as a individual as a citizen what can you do you can talk about todav to everybody you can talk about mydas to everybody you can practice it consciously leave everything better than you found it stay away from chaos as much as possible stay away from it and here is the most important thing that i want to leave with all of you with respect to today's world that just because you have an opinion please don't think it is the good or right opinion to give please stop giving opinions 
verify your opinion. If your opinion is scientific, if your opinion is grounded in values, ethics, and traditions, if your opinion is going to leave the world a better place, then give that opinion. Otherwise, we will continue contributing to the chaos around us. And that's what we can do as a citizen. And as a leader in an organization, what do you do? You do some very simple things. Number one, talk about this. Create awareness. Make the transition yourself. Stop living the Todav life. Come to a Midas life. Live the Midas life as much as possible. And then help others to do that. And choose a purpose that you can work with. Most of you in business and HR can influence the purpose of the organization. Create more of a change from there. And last but not the least, stay away from anything that is shallow, anything that will create a challenge. Simple steps that you can practice once you've understood this. Okay? And lastly, what can HR leaders do in this? Create conversations. And that's one of the first things that I shared with you that as I have conversed with you on this, please go back and create this conversation. If you want our help in creating, please reach out to us. We'll help you create these conversations. But create these conversations so that others can understand these truths. And then, once you create those conversations, focus and steer the opinion in the positive direction. Steer people towards living a Midas life. And continuously do that. HR can make the difference in the organizations. Build awareness and build capability so that the organization really changes and becomes positive. That's what you do. So as a citizen, as a business leader, as HR, you can play different roles. And you can play very constructive and very powerful roles. Helps? Yeah? And lastly, as we move forward, it all comes down to being a responsible leader. And this is the framework that I've been working with for the last many, many years based on tons of years of research. I've worked with more than a few lakh people in my life now uh, in various capacities as a business, HR, and responsible uh, and a leader. And this is my discovery, that any leader, any responsible leader will do five things at any given point in time. Number one, he or she will develop themselves. Always, continuously develop themselves, never becoming outdated, no matter what you're doing, no matter what profession you are in. Even if you were a simple person living a retired life or living the life of a housewife or a house help or whatever, you will develop yourself. Mm -hmm. Second thing, you will rally others around. You will take people along. You will never divide. You will combine people. You will connect people. And whatever your contributions are, you will make sure that they are all building a progressive culture around you, in your family, in your organizations. You will continuously focus on building ethical practices, value-driven practices, tradition, culture. You will continuously ensure that. And ensuring sustainability in things, taking care of environment, taking care of everything that you can contribute that can build a better life. That's what essentially you'll be doing. And that's being a responsible leader. And you don't have to have some designation in an organization to be a leader. You can be a leader in your own right wherever you are, whoever you are. Yes? Agree to that? Can you be a leader? In your country? In your society? Yes? And that's a resolve that we need to have all of you contribute positively to Nepal, to this region, to this globe. For all you know, 10 years down this line, some of you may be living in some other country, doing something better. You may be doing something really good for Nepal, whichever way, wherever you are, be a responsible leader. Be a responsible leader within the closed doors of your home. Do better there. That's my appeal to all of you. And I'm very conscious as I say all of these things that it is not going to be easy. I'm not telling you that. I'm only telling you that it's going to be worth it. That's what I'm telling you. None of this is going to be easy, but it's definitely going to be worth it if you do it. You will pride yourselves if you do this. Thank you. That's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you.
Yes, absolutely. We can take questions, yes. Yes, please. Uh, all of you can write down your questions and pass on to our volunteers. That's sure. the easiest so that we can read it. Yes, yeah. please. Okay. It's a lot of questions, sir. Uh, nice to meet you. Good morning. Sure. I'm Susesh Bhaidya from Sanima Bank Limited. Uh, I just want to know your view on this. Is it good to maintain certain distance from people to maintain healthy and uh, sustainable relationship? Sure. So uh, it's an important question that all of us need to learn and a uh, point that all of us need to live in, uh, learn in our lives. Boundaries are good, always. You need to choose your boundaries and you need to keep your boundaries wherever you are, within families, within organizations, within society. Anything that is boundaryless will end up creating chaos for you at some point in time. Helps? And when you bring boundaries, you bring conscious, chosen distance. Distance hurts relationships when they come without choice. You know, automatic distance. Distance comes when people build silence, violence around them. That distance is not good. But a distance that's created by chosen boundaries, always good. Okay? Thank you. All right. Other questions? Other questions? Other questions? Please save Hello? time, save time, yes, yes please. Uh, so my question is, uh, so many of the times uh, in the organization what happens is when there is a change in a policy or the strategic changes, uh, many things are uh, uh, misinterpreted. So uh, like the things will not like be uh, that uh, which you actually mean to be. So uh, how to deal with such kind of situations? Sure, uh, lovely question and this is one question that keeps coming up time and again when I'm interacting with leaders and businesses. See, there are two things that all of us need to understand. That whenever we are dealing with people, everybody's understanding is going to be different about different things. Agree? Yes. Right? Now, the way to counter that, number one, is to include people in design. Especially in an organization, when you're designing policies, when you're designing change, when you're designing structures, when you're designing any sort of communication, take people along check on the messaging, do ideation, understand everybody's needs. If you've done this, you'll highly likely get your design right, number one. Number two is dialogues. First time, second time, there is a chance that people may misinterpret, misunderstand, because words mean different things. And whatever language we are communicating in the language, the words itself can mean different things for people coming from different regions. Happens again? So how do you eliminate that? Dialogue. A dialogue is a process of continuous conversations where you resolve whatever differences that come up. So keep these two things in mind, design and dialogue. If you take these two principles along, whatever the change might be, even if it's an organization-wide transformation that you're doing, you will get better results. All right? Thank you. Others? Yes, uh, hello, Sai, sir. Good morning. Good where? morning, everyone. Okay, where are you? First. I'm here, sir. Okay. The last. Yes. <laughs> All right. Yes. So, uh, first of all, thank you so much for your wonderful presentation and sharing. Sure. Uh, I have a very simple question. Uh, you know, I need a suggestion. Uh, what What are your suggestions for young mind to be a good change maker? Hmm. Yes. <laughs> so, everything that I said today is in that direction that absorb these kind of things and be a change maker. But here are my top three recommendations for everybody, not just young minds. Number one, in today's world, we need to be better informed than we are. And when I say that, I consciously say this, that many of us are absorbing information from uh, not recognized or not correct platforms and believing that. So changing that, getting right factual information that will be your first step of doing this. Number two, participating in a lot of dialogues with people who are better than you, more intelligent than you, more better informed, doing bigger things than you. That expands our mind, right? So insights, dialogue, and then formulate an opinion which is worthy 
of changing this world and leaving it a better place. So that's something that I would recommend to just about anybody, not just for young minds. Yeah. Well, sir. By Thank the way, you so much. By the way, what determines the youth of the mind? <laughs> that's something that we want to think about, yeah? There are some 70-year-olds who are really young and there are some 20-year-olds who possibly have nothing in their heads. So what is youth of the mind? That's a question we need to ask. All right, thank you. I, I think we had a question here on one of these tables, no? Yes. Oh, so thank you so much for the session, sir. Uh, the things you touched on were so deep. Uh, they made me reflect on my own patterns. And um, my question is, so uh, we talked about, uh, you know, uh, getting the maximum benefit out of everything should not always be our approach. However, uh, in the society we live today, so uh, even educational institutions, what we have learned and, uh, in our workplaces, we are always expected and taught to get maxim maximum ba benefits out of things we do. So uh, this, you know, clashes with our values as well. So how do we sure. deal with this? How do we go about this? Okay. So two ways to understand this, like, let's ask this. Do you have a hobby or an interest? What is the hobby or interest that you have? Can you get the mic back for please for a moment? What's your hobby or interest that you have? Um, so, I have uh, multiple hobbies, uh, one I Give like me your highest, have. best, number one. Best, uh, that would be uh, art, I like to, I'm not good at it, but I like to paint. Paint? Yeah. Awesome. Are you the best painter in the world? No. <laughs> would you like to be the best painter in the world? No. <laughs> it's a choice. Now, see, hidden in that answer is a value. And what is that? You're doing this for fun, you're doing this for joy. Okay. Now, let's say you have 20 friends around you who all keep saying that you're really good, you're really good, really good, you need to start competing, you need to start doing exhibitions. Can that take away your fun and joy? Yes, it does. So, you understand the answer? So, it's simple. If you make a choice to maximize something, choice, conscious choice, that your life is going to be better. If you say, I want to be the best artist in this world and I want to make sure that my career is in art. I express myself to the world through art, or I express my world, myself to the world through running, or to piano, or through uh, medicine, or whatever that is, or mountaineering for that matter of fact, whatever it is. If you make a choice to maximize, it's a wonderful choice. But if the society is forcing you, friends and family are forcing you, and then you start doing it, that's when you will burn out. You understand? So that's how you need to choose your value. What am I doing this for? Who am I doing this for? Is it? Is it the purpose of my life? If it's a purpose of your life, maximize it. In fact, live the living daylight out of your dream. That's what you should do. But if it's not your dream, if it's somebody else's dream, neither are you going to be happy, nor are you going to make this world happy by doing that. Okay? Got it. That Thank you. Sense. Thank you so much, sir. All right. Yes. There's a question here. Okay. We'll come to you in a minute. Can we get the mic here after... That table, please. Hello, sir. Yes, please. Uh, I have one question. How do we cope with the situation when we are not able to uh, achieve the required result? Because we change ourselves, but the people around us don't change. Sure. So, the moment you realize that you are changing, people around you are not changing, the first thing you need to realize is you are not alone. You are among 7 billion people on earth. Right? Everybody in this world thinks that I am changing. Others are not changing. It's a constant challenge. My invitation to that is, let it be like that. Forget about others. You do your best. Can you show up as your best person every single day? Do you have the energy to, and the motivation to do that? Just stick to that. What will happen? Sooner or later, you will inspire somebody. One person. Maybe half a person you will inspire. Maybe a quarter person you will inspire. But will you inspire somebody? You will. If you consistently keep showing up, you will inspire somebody. And that's the time that your change spirit has infected somebody. Let that infection happen. You have to be patient enough, consistent enough for that. And even if others don't pick up on your change, will your life be better if you change? Just do that. Stop looking at the world. Right? Give. Make the world a better place. Don't force it. The only person you will control on, that's it. 
just be peaceful with that fact. Okay? Like, I'm here, I'm speaking to 200 of you young minds. As much as I prepared hard for this presentation, as much as I had dialogues with many of you to figure out what should I talk about, as much as I'm spending all this time and interaction here with all of you, I'm going to leave this choice the moment I finish my talk on all of you, if you're going to change or not. I will not sit and worry how many of those 200 people made that change. I will believe, I will go with the belief, I will go with the trust that all of you will change. But will I force you to change? No, I would not. I only want to inspire you. And that's the way I will do it. Will I do it 200 year, days later? Yes. Will I do it 20 years later? Yes. I will continue to inspire people like this. That's all what I will do. Because that's the only thing in my control. Happens? So just do your best. And I'm sure you will change the world. Awesome. Thank you. So thank you, sir. Yes. Uh, so my question is, as an HR professional, uh, our first responsibility is to make uh, our workplace a better place to work. So while shifting from Torad to Midas, is there any particular framework or regular practice that we, as a HR professional, can sure. suggest the people? Uh, awesome. So um, I will go back to the answer that we gave one of our colleagues right now. Those two words, the two Ds, design and dialogue. Please keep doing that. Design everything. And, and remember, even before you're a HR professional, you're a professional. Even before you're a professional, you're a human being. Bring the human being to work, right? If you're human, you will know what other humans need, always. The moment you become professional, HR professional, business professional, then you will have something else guiding you to make your choices. Be human first. In our world, we have tons of angels and this and that and the other. We have very few humans. Can you be another human? Will you be? Awesome. That's the change that you need to make. Thank you. Yes. Hi, I have a question. Thank you for the presentation. So you have keep uh, saying about the consistency. So tips you can give to maintain that consistency and how can I motivate to uh, my, my motivate myself for that consistency? Okay. So here's the here's a simple thing that you need to remember that what you need for your life is always inside you. Your truth is inside you, right? So when you lie down to sleep every day in the night, can you lie to yourself? Can you? Never know. Everything flashes by, and that's what it is. I mean, I've not seen the deathbed, but people equally say this, that when you lie down in your deathbed, again, you cannot lie. So here's the fact that there are two times in our lives that we will never be able to lie to ourselves. When you're lying down to sleep and you're lying down to die. Now, the sleeping moment comes every day. Can you take stock of your life? This is something my spiritual guru says to me and all of us who follow him. Uh, uh, and he's a great Kriya Yogi, that tradition. He says continuously that contemplate, contemplate. Yes? From these very lands, there is a, there's an amazing human being by the name of His Holiness Dalai Lama. That is his name? What does he say? Contemplate, contemplate. This is what he says. You talk to any great leader, any great guru, this is what they will say. Contemplate. What are you doing? So if you contemplate what you're doing, your truth will always be in your sight. If you have your truth in your sight, you don't need anything to motivate you. More than enough. What do you want? What do you want to be? Where do you want to go? What do you want to achieve? That's what you need to know at any point in time. Helps? Wish you the very best with your life. Yeah? Thank you. Let's take two last questions now. Oh, there are a few hands going up there, and somebody was trying to say hello from here. I couldn't make out who it was. Hello, good morning, sir. Where are so you first? I'm here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm speaking here from here, sir. Yes, yes, got it. Okay. okay. <laughs> What's your question? So, I'm Benita Kesi from Sarawagi Group. Hmm. It was a great opportunity to hear from you. I have a question for you today. So uh, today people, people are not being lawyer, lawyer towards the company. They are frequently leaving the company. Sure. So what are the practices we can apply so, uh, so that we can take a control over this? All right. So uh, the simplest thing for you to do is once you go back to your workplace, create some dialogues around this. Ask people what is the issue that they face while they work in the organization. It's a very simple question. And if you do that, 
you will find all sorts of opinion. There is a bunch of things people will say, everything from flexible working hours to workload to work-life balance to salaries to education, everything. Now, once you hear that point of views, all those point of views, you need to determine what will be the top two, three things that you can essentially change to arrest the maximum number of attrition. So it's a simple process. So again, go back to dialogue, understand from people, and then design your policies around that. So that's the simplest thing that you can do. At the end of it, would you still be able to satisfy everybody? No. And remember as HR professionals that many a times people are working in your organization not by design but by accident. They were looking for a job and this is the job that they found. They were not looking to work for your organization. They were not looking to work for the boss that they're working for. They were not looking to work in that profession that they were working for. They're there by accident. And when you have accidents, people also have realizations. When people have realizations, they will do one of two things. Either they will change or they will move out. When they move out, you will have attrition. So is attrition natural? Yes? How many of you found your jobs by accident? <laughs> many of us. Yeah, yeah. So we did. So that's what happens with most professionals. We don't choose our profession, our organization, what we work, who we work for by choice. So some of this will happen. Helps. So go back, create dialogues, and then create the change around that. Okay. One last question before I wind up. One last question. Hello. Can you hear me? Where are you first? Here. Okay. All right. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for a great session. Good I job. just wanted to talk about being more assured. So that's something I struggle with. Okay. Uh, you did mention being mindful, inquisitive, and okay. having deep, deep conversations. Okay. Uh, but even uh, I work as a training officer, and even okay. in my trainings, sure. I feel like I'm not assured. I keep asking my sure. um, the people that I train. I keep asking them if sure. I'm doing okay. So I want to work on that. So I just wanted to okay. ask you. I think. Uh, for the last question for the day, we couldn't have had a better question. Thank you for asking that question. Now, here are a few things that all of us need to realize. And you may feel sad, bad when I bring these things up. But for most human beings, being unassured, not liking who they are, or not being sure of who they are, really starts at childhood. It starts with the negative messages that many of us receive in our families. And then it keeps building up. Teachers, friends, up in college, university, many of us get bullied, call names, we have challenges that we experience. So these are the places where our self-assurance, our self-belief goes away. Our confidence goes down. Have you seen this happening? Yes? Any of us? Negative messages? Very common. And then what happens? Not everything is hunky-dory in life. You have failures. And those failures start creating challenges. Now, the most important thing that every human being needs to understand is, what's the emotional baggage that I carry in this situation? What's the hurt that I carry? I had read a beautiful quotation uh, many years back, and it said this, that, if you don't heal what cut you, you will bleed on those who didn't cut you. Right? So most of us are walking around bleeding, injured, with the challenges and emotional baggages of our life, and most of us have not done anything to solve those. Some ways of solving those are simple. Seeing a counselor, a therapist, a coach, a mentor, Somebody to have a conversation with who can help you overcome that challenge that you carry, that hurt that you carry. And if the hurt is deeper, it's an imprint much deeper on your soul, then you need a deeper journey. Today's world, there are many people who are shifting to spiritual life and spiritual pursuits to improve their personalities, to improve who they are as their experience. Maybe that is where your answer is. There are some people who travel, see the world, learn, some of these things heal you. But the point to your answer is, if you find that you are not assured, you're looking for assurance elsewhere, please find the source of that challenge and heal that challenge, whether it was a childhood experience or some failure of your life. But remember this one thing. If you're breathing, if you're alive and kicking, 
there is something good that you're meant to do for this life, whether it's small or whether it is big. My hope is all of us make that. Do what you're supposed to do. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful afternoon. It was amazing talking to all of you. Thank you. God bless you. Do well. Do well. Become the best person that you can ever become. Thank you. And for so, so, so many reasons, I'm sure you all will agree, we did not want this session to end, right? Yes, and my pleasure now uh, to request uh, Mr. Chandran to kindly join us on stage for this very important formality. Uh, I'm sure you all would agree. For me, at least, this has been one of the most, uh, so please, one of the most engaging, comprehensive, closest to, I mean, close to reality and, uh, you know, session that I have ever attended in a professional sphere. And together, let us thank Mr. Chandran for firstly traveling all the way to Kathmandu, being with us uh, and sharing these very, very, very thought-provoking provo uh, um, expert advice or his perspectives and you know uh, an awakening uh, thoughts now i would want to uh, if you allow me just want to take one more minute you know most of the time in professional spheres sometimes we as professionals happen to take along a lot of the person we are to these professional spheres and most of the time we forget the the very person that we are and I believe this particular session does, um, you know, overhaul uh, the entire thinking process that we have been thus far, so far, and uh, and, and and is creating a lot of thinking.